Hello everyone and welcome back to the Daily American. We do Daily American stuff every day. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Daily American. We do Daily American stuff every day. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Daily American. We do Daily American stuff every day. And what we're going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be introducing you to HP tuners and what a Ford EcoBoost, well at least a 2020 Ford EcoBoost tune file actually looks like. Hopefully we'll be able to make sense of what all these tables mean and what we can change to make our cars go faster. Alright, so uh, let's close that out so for demonstration purposes only. You'll be greeted with a blank screen uh, with nothing up here up top, no options to get, uh, get going. And um, this is normally where you would start. You would start by touching this button here, a little chip symbol with a green arrow that says read vehicle. And when your MPVI is hooked to a computer and your car with the ignition on, you would gather the info, select the modules that you want to read, ECM, TCM, uh, fuel pump control module, and all of the like. Uh, and then you would click read. We don't have any of that hooked up because this is happening on my laptop, so just we're clicking buttons right there for demonstration purposes only. Once it has downloaded the factory calibration, you'll be presented with a save window, <clears throat> and then you'll title uh, your tune files accordingly so that you can find them if you, can, if you need to type in the search bar. Uh, by the way, I guess this is a good time to introduce the name of the car. We settled on Swiper. We have an Explorer, and naturally, her name is Dora, the Explorer. So that's the name of the car now. It's called Swiper, Swiper and Dora. With all that explained, let's open up a stock file and uh, see what we can go through. Now this, uh, if, you're, if you're new to HP tuners, we probably need to make an introductory video just for HP tuners new users. If you would be interested in that, please add a comment down below. Uh, if I get enough requests for that, I'll go through it. Uh, the very first place we're gonna start is gonna be under the engine tab. And let's start all the way over here in general. Uh, see if there's anything in here we can change. Uh, and all of these different sections will, uh, some of them are drop down tabs, some of them are uh, numbered parameters that you can change. But either way, regardless of what they are, if there has been a description decoded by the HP Tuners engineers, there will be a description of it down below right here. Drive mode setting normal. If the drive mode override switch is enabled, this will set the drive mode that the vehicle is using while running. Not on note that all other drive modes will not be available while the override is active. I like to be able to switch things around, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Zeus, for God's sakes, man. How many of you out there have an American Bulldog? <laughs> oh, looky here. Target idle speed at startup in the cold temperature range, 1250. Well, there you go. So we could probably change that to something like 900. 900. Right. Okay. So we've done that. We've made that change. Say you forgot what that is. Undo changes. Bang. There you go. Look at that takes it all the way back. In case that didn't work, you could go in here and open up another copy of this tune file. And now every change that's in here will be highlighted in green. So let's make that change. Right? We'll save it. So you know that that parameter right there will be highlighted in green if they are different from the compare file. The compare file in this instance is going to be another copy of our stock unmodified tune file. So if we want to go all the way back, we find out what tables are green that we want to change back. 
We can view that here, show compare file, show main file, and then we can see the differences between the two. The differences here is 350 RPM, so we'll zero that out so there's no difference. And now it is back to blue, back to stop. Just a little neat feature. Pedal follower is disabled, and instead it uses feedback for manipulation. I've heard that turning this on can, you know, in theory it would make it a drive-by cable. Put your foot down, the throttle opens and closes in a corresponding same amount of degree. Ford uses the throttle in a way that you wouldn't quite expect. Like you would expect, put the foot down halfway, so to speak, the throttle blade's going to open halfway. You know what I mean? That's not the case. It will open and close to deliver a corresponding amount of torque desired. Does that make sense? Your throttle pedal is no longer a throttle pedal per se. It is a torque pedal. Push your foot down to request a specific amount of torque and the computer takes over and says, hmm, it wants 100 foot-pounds at 15% of torque pedal or accelerator pedal, gas pedal, the pedal inside the car that your foot's resting on, torque pedal, 15% torque pedal equals 100 foot-pounds of torque at this RPM, so let's open the throttle, add boost, add timing, add fuel, or vice versa, take away timing, take away fuel, take away boost, close throttle, to achieve or limit to that specific amount of torque. Does that make sense? You ask for torque, it gives you torque to the best of its calculations within a set of limited parameters. Basically all we're going to be doing is going through here and trying to figure out what most of these parameters and tabs in here do so that we can get a predictable result. Because here's the deal, the less you do to achieve your goals, the more control you have, I think, over your tune file because you don't have so many variables to chase around. Well, what did I actually change to do this? Now, maybe we'll get there. Maybe we'll get to where we've rewritten every table in here. I doubt it. Shift pressures and shift timing. Uh, you put this thing in drag mode, it strips rubber off the rear tires pretty hard. Uh, so I'm not interested in changing any of this right now. We will later. Torque management. This is really the only one I changed besides the shift scheduling. What I did here uh, is I changed uh, the torque base shift. I turned it off because it'll use our base table and then it will start thinking to itself like, okay, well, we're only asking for this much uh, throttle input so I think we can make it act a little smoother if I don't do the base table and I kind of do my own thing I didn't like that I wanted to be in control so I turned that off and that made the car feel better to me your mileage may vary don't look at this trans brake stuff don't look at that we're not ready for that yet we're baby steps here alright torque management leave your upshift torque management on Leave it in there. It can only add to um, your transmission's life. Okay, What it does, it takes power away when it's changing cogs or changing clutches. You want that in there the majority of the time because you don't want those clutches constantly banging against the engine torque because that's going to cause them to slip. If you're not set up to run high pressure and quick shift times all of the time, which you don't want to be, because you want it to operate smoothly, you're going to have to take power away from the engine so that those clutches can engage before the power comes back. Don't turn that off. Alright, I hope I got that across. You can lower it a little bit, maybe. But like I say, you put this thing in drag mode, there is no torque management there. It strips rubber off quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I mean hardcore. So you can have your fun, turn it down most of the time. It only does good things for your transmission. 
Uh, that's what the uh, HP Tuner's Tune file looks like. Now let's get into the tool to help us decipher what we're looking at. And that is called the VCM Scanner. All right, that's going to conclude today's episode. We have introduced the VCM Editor and the 2020 Ford Mustang EcoBoost Tune File. Tune in next week when we explore the VCM Scanner, how to set that up, what you're going to need, what you're going to need to know, and what it tells you. Come back next week and I'll walk you through that step by step. As always, thanks for watching. Give me a like and subscribe. Hit the notification button, all that good stuff. Leave a comment below in the comment section for what you'd like to see us do in the future and how far you want to go with this Mustang project. If you're interested in anything tuning, please contact me at da underscore racing at outlook.com. You can find me on Facebook forward slash Daily American Racing. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.